Hey everybody, so we're about to talk about live looping hands-free in Ableton, very popular topic around the interwebs. And so I'm gonna hit you with uh, the takeaways right away firsthand because what you're about to see is me spending about 30 minutes uh, finding my way into the perfect solution for this, which is yes, entirely 100% hands-free. You can get a lot of loops happening complete boss style, you know, just everything always just magically going totally works. Um, so at a minimum, the takeaway at a minimum, you need Ableton and a MIDI foot controller. Um, there's several out there to use. I use a Nectar Pacer uh, to use mine. And so in its final form, I end up using the Pacer to basically select channels on Ableton. And I use the push uh, that is a foot controller, a damper pedal plugged into the push, one of its controller ports on the back. And I use the damper pedal to kick off the loops, the recording, since it's in fixed loop recording mode, which is only possible with the push too. Um, I don't have to tell it to stop recording. I just have to have told it how long to record as in the size four bar, a bar, etc., And it gets the stops and get the loop going on its own. Uh, if I don't have a push too, maybe that's you, you have to start and stop with your MIDI foot controller, um, which I think I was also doing in there at some point. So uh, hopefully this is useful to you. Who knows? If it is, great. Give it a try. Jump in. Have some fun. If not, cheers. Check something else out. Have a great day. Hello, everybody. Welcome into the studio this fine day. We are going to do a little bit of looping in Ableton as if we were, uh, you know, like using it like a boss uh, loop or pedal, like one of the big ones. And uh, I've done a tutorial to, or two similar to this before. This is going to be a little bit more straightforward, normal live looping like you're used to seeing. So uh, I'll loop some up and then uh, you can watch how I do it, see if you figure out what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, then I'll talk about it. We'll break it down. We'll have a little session as it were. So let's go over to this view. You can see what we've got basically is a whole bunch of open tracks. So we'll start with piano. And get around my guitar here. Base. 
do a smooth, a smooth fade out. Well, a smooth fade. So, how easy was that, right? How easy was that? How easy? How easy? It was so easy, but it was fun. It was super cool. That camera looks laggy, so we're going to have to see if that works out. But what happened over here on our Raven? What are we using? What things are around that made all this work, right? So basically, what we're doing is if you look up across the top of the uh, Ableton interface here, you're going to see four acoustic guitar tracks in a drum track, which is easy drummer acoustic, or that's what those letters are, a bass track, easy drummer electric track. So that's another drum track. Um, the reason the bass is in between those is just because I want that for my feet so I can just go from one to the other. And then uh, the other stuff is on a next bank up in the foot switch. So uh, I like to have, uh, uh, or not like to have, I decided this is the first time I've ever done this like this, like just straight live looping kind of in this fashion. I mean, I've done it, but uh, so uh, I like, I, I wanted to have four acoustic guitar channels available to me and then the dr drums and the bass all on one foot switch bank without having to bank up. Next bank up, then we have the electric drums, the guitars and vocals and other stuff. So we've got some acoustic guitar channels, drums, bass, electronic drums, uh, electric guitar, electric guitar, and then some two vocals, and then stabs are strings, horns, and that stuff I didn't use. Piano I did use on 15. I should have used piano pad too, or also rather, but I forgot to uh, record that at the same time. Nobody still sounded fine. And that's all that's happening there. When I'm turning on and off the loops, I'm simply uh, touching the empty cells below the full cells. The squares are a cell. And when you look up here, you they're empty because there is, there we go, there's my mouse. They're empty up here because I added an empty scene. That would not work if you didn't have an empty scene there. FYI, the little things matter. So, uh, and that's just to stop them again, you know, start them again by just tapping on them. And, um, you know, that's the long and short of it. So as we started out, how did I have things set and how did I do this exactly? So let's talk first about controllers. We have a, a keyboard controller for a uh, piano, obviously. I turned the volume all the way down. So we have that for the for the piano, this controller, and the drums, and whatever else we, we might want to play. This is something else altogether. It's sound effects stuff. Uh, but we got that going. We've got the Ableton Push here, which is our main kind of Ableton controller, looper, mixer controller. Gives us a bit more hands-off, and it also gives us one very key important function, and that is fixed length recording. If you use the push to trigger off things, like I triggered the piano from the push, and by, in doing so, I didn't have to tell it when to stop recording that loop. And that's a very important feature of, that you only get with the push. So if you've struggled with looping with Ableton at all without a push, that may be one of the reasons why. Um, so, and as you'll see, I have to, um, if I'm hands-free live looping, as if they're, you know, same same experience as a boss looper pedal, uh, I'm hitting the offs as well as the ons with this. Now there is a trigger port back here, which I haven't investigated yet. Uh, and that may be, um, that may enable, let's see about that. That may allow us to uh, hit a trigger to start the loop with our, with our feet. Uh, and that would still stop the loop automatically with fixed length recording. That, that's an interesting proposition, isn't it? Let me grab, I need a, uh, I need a trigger. I need a trigger. I know there's one right out there. I'll grab it. I say trigger, but really we're talking about a sustain pedal. I mean, any MIDI, anything that sends a MIDI signal is kind of a trigger. If it has the added bonus of being able to be operated by your foot, that is 
as I said, an added bonus. Um, yep. Now let's see if it stops. No, it's still not stopping. Okay, so there's uh, a good test. I basically, I plug this into the port in the back. Uh, there's two ports for a foot switch back here. One of them is already used by one of these other foot switches and I don't remember which, but it has nothing to do with kind of the push. It has something to do with other stuff, just Ableton in general. Uh, so what just happened was I plug this in here and this will, I mean, it's better than nothing. It will start off your, your recording and stuff like that. So if I clear out this loophole right there, uh, right here is what we're talking about. It's kind of hard. The colors are still kind of weird, uh, cheesy camera, but so I, I should be able, I hit this, I plugged this guy into this port right here. And so if I hit, this is record enabled the piano track. <clears throat> You get a count in, it starts going, I'll play some stuff. Oh, okay, so, well, that's a, that's a bad example to use. Um, it is looping over itself, as you can see <clears throat> in the MIDI roll there. What we need to try is an actual uh, audio track. So we, we'll do one of these guitar tracks. Started it with this. Now we'll see if it stops recording. Yeah, it does. Okay, so that's totally handy. This will stay right down here <laughs> with my stuff at my feet. Uh, let's tuck you behind. And so why that's useful is currently uh, through this other controller that you can see over here, me waving my foot over. Um, these, all of these controls are mapped to these cells up here on the first row of this Ableton project. Uh, and so that uh, I can basically select the new track, it's ready to go. And I basically hit that track's trigger to make it happen. Go back down to the correct Preset, I'm way off. Where are we? There. Uh, when I go back down, so I'm looking for slot five, this one right here, and if I hit now this, delete that out of there, you can see it starts blinking. Off it goes recording. So let's see now of course if i go to the base that's going to be different let's pull that clip out of there now this one if i now this is the same kind of test exactly um with the trigger the other trigger plugged into the rear port on of the push we were able to and if we just start the recording on the push by going like that and touching the pad it will record for however many bars we've tell, told it to record uh, with fixed length turned on and if we hold down fixed length, your settings come up. We're set to four bars. And so, but normally what I've just been doing and what I just did on camera before I grabbed this trigger, extra trigger thing, uh, was that I pushed the button once to start it and once to stop it. So let's see what happens uh, as I do that now. So uh, this would be the sixth slot over. You can see I've even numbered six base. All of them are numbered, so I can see just, oh, I need six, and I know, boom, there's six. And it's playing along. It's playing along, I wait for it to come back around. I hit my trigger, boom, it's off and recording. Now we're waiting to see if it'll stop when this comes around. See, it does not stop. So there may be, and again, what's the difference? Let's get rid of that, what we just did. Undo, please. Hello, how many undos do I have to hit? We'll just delete it. The difference, of course, was again, here's that same thing, but this time we'll press this other trigger that's over under my push. So instead of, look at my feet, instead of this trigger, we're gonna press this sustain pedal that we just plugged into the back of the push, go. And now we're recording a bass line. Boom, boom, 
Ah, and it just went around. So that is a fundamental difference uh, in the way things behave. And I perhaps don't know of a MIDI control to learn up in the Ableton interface for my foot controller that will allow that to happen, but I'm pretty sure that doesn't exist because um, that's kind of the whole, that's one of the ways they get you, it's one of the ways they get you to get a push is because I'm pretty sure you, you just can't do that outside of the push. And that would make perfect sense that that's the way it would function. I would have to hit this twice. So that actually really kind of simplifies this exact rig that I've just set up and that we're working with. Because um, as I just did it and played for you, as if you, uh, I don't think the overhead cameras and all that were spinning, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but you would have seen me stepping through these pedals over here, stepping through these as I went to each channel, turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off. So the, the process was basically select your channel with your hand, get ready to play it on, off. Select your next one, get ready to play it on, off. Select your next one, get ready to play it on, off. It's not at all hands-free, right? Not at all. So, um, and I'm like, wait a minute, did I have to select them? I don't even know. I'll have to go back. I'll have to go back and and kind of look. So, because what I'm what I'm thinking about is uh, record arm on select. Oh yeah. Okay. Did you just see that? What just happened? Nice. So uh, there is, an, and you can do it hands free. I kind of I'll do it. I'll do it again right now, and we'll see like how how that goes. Um, I would expect it'll go fine. The what just happened was uh, I just pressed the my MIDI button once. So the fourth one over down here, one time to select the channel. So I'll move this over here where it was, right? One time selected the channel, and because the channel selected, the record arm also selected. Why did that happen, Harp? Let me show you. You have an options dot text file for Ableton. It's in your Ableton folder. Um, if I go like this, it can show me, you can see that's where your folder is. If you're on Mac, if you're on Windows, I don't know, Google it. Lots of info out there. You can figure it out easy. Easy, but uh, put this command in there, save it, restart live, and then when you click on tracks, you can see arm on, they will arm when you change it. And so that's a key part of kind of doing this hands free. So as you saw with something else selected, I could hit button four one time, it got it there. And uh, let's actually here get something, get it playing. So I'm ready to drop in another acoustic guitar track. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, hit, hit button four, get it switched over there. Get ready to hit button four again. It's punched off and off. We are recording. As soon as I'm ready for it to stop recording, I'm gonna hit button four again. Boom! Now it's no longer it's looping now. That's cool. So as we just learned, I could have done that now with this other switch that's over here under my push so i'm i'm ready so i could i could really i could use these buttons and that gets me to a good uh that gets me to a pretty poignant point and where this is like how about a learning process of a video right here this is how you learn shit guys and so as i'm putting this together i'm thinking okay cool i've now got a no-brainer for every time that my channel is select i can just mash this button right here and it's going to do the fixed loop recording that i needed to for that section awesome so uh but how, now how do i get around with the tracks you know and what you need is an arrow left and an arrow right and there's not that in the foot controller you have to kind of midi learn that there's no MIDI learn for left and right. For example, there is MIDI learn that I can use if I go down to my main patch, watch my cursor go up and down, the light gray part. That's me with my feet there. Um, that is MIDI learned over to uh, over on the master. It's under these little dot sevens up and down. And so that's how that happens. And I can get around like that. There is no MIDI learn in Ableton though for 
left and right cursor, like your cursor. So the workaround for that is to get a program like MIDI pipe or MIDI to key or MIDI key, whatever, some kind of little uh, utility intermediary that is going to pick up a certain MIDI note that you tell it to, convert that to a keystroke and do that keystroke on the system. That shit's problematic. I don't like it. Like I've used it in other programs. I've used it in this. I was just I just generally don't like it because I mean it's sending a system wide keystroke for one thing. So if the right thing is not active, you might bunk something else. It's just annoying. Uh, there's a variety of things about it that I don't like, but it really is the only solution, and that's kind of what people do. So I was sitting here thinking about that, and I'm like already in my head going, I went to that place while I was talking about whatever I was talking about a minute ago, and it was like, yeah. I'm totally going to have to like set up that crap, which I hate, um, but I don't have to. Uh, if you have a limited number of MIDI controllers, yeah, you do. I have a Nectar Pacer. That's what this big thing down here is. So as uh, I've already been talking about, I've already laid out two of my presets with all six buttons being directly mapped to these Ableton cells for uh, that go across from, you know, channels. Well, it's two. I have a group channel on there. But two, three, four over to uh, nine or whatever. And, or 11, I guess, are all mapped because there are 12, 13. There's six buttons on each bank. I have two banks programmed for this. So those give me, like wrong r roundabout way to get there. Those give me the direct access control to each channel that I, that I need to get. So like, uh, I might not even have to have this arm on selection thing. Yeah, I think probably yes, still, even with the added foot switch. Uh, when I hit that button, it's going over there. When I hit this button, it's going over here. Same thing with this one. Now, if they're empty, I'm like, if they're empty and you're doing it in time, I think this will work. Uh, but what that was doing was triggering them all off at, you know, on the next bar and getting all out of whack. So we've highlighted, we're deleting. So let's let's run this test again with our newfound knowledge. We now have the added, uh, down here below the push, we have the added damper controller, which is plugged into the back of the push, which is functioning as my finger pressing one of these buttons on here, um, which is good. That allows us to hands-free stop the loop recording to get on to the next thing without having to tap a button to do it, which is not a big deal, but it's always one last thing is one last thing, especially when you're like trying to perform stuff. So uh, where were we? We start with piano. Let's turn the piano on. Turn the volume back up. In case you're wondering, I have everything go through a group channel set to this knob right here so I can turn the music down and keep talking, but without turning the music off. It's just, you know, subtle stuff. It's good for streaming. Um, we could also turn the piano pad on, couldn't we, and do both of these the same? No. Yeah, let's do it. Hold down Option or something. Command. And click the second record button. Now you've got two things ready to record and I should be able to actually hit this foot trigger and that should do it. So get ready and it should get, no, I just got one. It just did the piano pad. So I won't use the foot trigger for the first one. I'll tap both tap, both pads at the same time. Oops, wrong, wrong octave on the piano. Let's do that again. have to manually turn off recording no matter how you start it. That sounds wrong, doesn't it? Let's maybe if it's one at a time. No, it's still recording. Yeah, you know, 
push has its funny things, so it still wants you to turn that record loop off. So that tells me, w are we better off just not even using that at all, using a MIDI foot controller for this one, like, period. So let's get on the second bank of my notes and go to a button that I'm, like, not really using, and we're going to learn it. So let's see. Oh, they're already learned. I don't know what I learned them to. Something else. Let's go ahead and, oh, I learned it to a pad controller from the screen. That's what it was. Let's put this one there and delete it from there. So now we know that that is going to trigger off that. So let's just record piano. Yes. Okay. Hit it with the feet. hit the trigger too fast with my left foot. <laughs> trigger? And then I, I triggered again with my left foot to make it stop. So, we're hands free so far. Let's grab a guitar. trying to stay hands-free. So now we want to get uh, selected on the first track. We'll get ready to play because we don't know what's going to happen. Ah, okay, so we're selected. We're good to go. We're ready to hit our, our new foot trigger. Nice, and that stops the loop. Now we'll select the next track with the MIDI controller down here. Boom, it's selected, it's ready to go. We'll get ready to mash the new controller. I need to know what I'm playing, don't I? Controller? Yeah, that's very nice.
so I inadvertently hit a patch that was in the wrong patch and I triggered the wrong channel just now which triggered the loop in that channel one of the acoustic guitars it triggered it off uh, out of sync so to fix that I simply restarted the intro that scene by hitting this trigger on the, on the push in the right time of course so it was not really noticeable but now we'll move on to electric guitar start soloing we've already done that so uh, there you go how easy was that we got hands-free looping across all those channels so for as many presets as I want to set up on this pacer and if you have one you can do the same uh, you've got six buttons for patch and you can just keep going right through your patches so you've got like that many boss looper pedals and not only that you know it's not just it's not just your normal instruments you know like you just the drums the you know that stuff goes in there we didn't even mess around with strings and horns and stuff but like you got what are these sounds what are these sounds You know, you don't get all that with your with your boss pedal. Okay, so uh, that's well long enough for uh, for this video. Um, I don't know what else really we would want to go over or cover uh, about that. That's pretty. Uh, I mean, like that. That was cooler than I thought it would be. I mean, that's like not. That's not that difficult. Um, that tells me that I kind of, like, I had an idea about how some, <clears throat> some, how one of the major looping artists on Twitch, Autopilot, I had an idea how he was doing it. Um, it's the same gear that he pretty much uses. I'm, I'm pretty certain that's how he's doing it. He probably has this published, uh, like, somewhere. I'd find out pretty easy. But I like to guess and figure stuff out uh, and see what happens and what works and what doesn't. And uh, this totally works if you have MIDI foot controllers. And so really it won't even matter. There's, it's a combination of two things. It's having a push controller that, with, that you can take something like a damper pedal, <clears throat> which is what I plugged into it, um, and use that. That will give you a foot controller to trigger fixed loop recording. That means loops that will stop themselves and immediately start cycling. You cannot do that without the push keep that in mind um, but you have that to trigger your loops and you have a MIDI controller to select your channels so what I mean you've got to do a lot of prep you got to have all your stuff laid out um, and of course you know you can always add channels and stuff like that but as you do these MIDI controls aren't going to be mapped to those uh, proper channels so you want to have a whole pile of channels ready and available that you can put stuff in I would say that would work good but uh, 
anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. I certainly did. Uh, didn't expect that, but learned a bunch. So awesome. Cheers. See you in the next one. Push the buttons and stuff. Uh, you know, whatever. Ciao. Have a great day.